How many times have you gotten together in a group to come up with some new ideas? One of the best things in speaking that you can do is constantly think of how you can do something better and how to get ideas from other people. A technique you've probably been in or done before is a thing called brainstorming. And brainstorming is great. That's where everybody sits around in a room and you get somebody to go up on the flip chart and write on the chart the different points and ideas people have. And the challenge with that is that there are some people in the room that are not as aggressive. And maybe they've got great ideas, but they're not as, as, as forceful getting those ideas out. And so they hold back and their idea doesn't come forward. Or maybe somebody else says the idea before them. They had a good idea, they could have contributed it. And then when the leader finally points to them and says, hey, uh, Bob, what do, you, what do you think we should do? Well, you know, Sally over here already told Bob's idea and he had an idea, but it's already been used. So all he can do is say the same thing. There's a technique that can overcome that. And I learned it years ago in the National Speakers Association. We were having a opportunity where we were changing the membership requirements for the professional level in the organization. And imagine a committee of professional speakers getting together. Who's gonna get a word in edgewise and who's gonna get them to shut up? Well, what was great is our group leader and the person in charge of the committee taught us a technique called brainwriting. And instead of people telling out loud what they wanted, she took and put several charts around the room. Now, nowadays, you could obviously set up whiteboards around the room. You could use all sorts of different technology, whatever fits. Um, I don't need to cover every single one of those things, but basically you need something as simple as a flip chart, a piece of paper on a wall with a question at the top of it. And you write the question at the top of it. Uh, in, in this case was, you know, what should be the minimum amount of speeches per year a professional member should have? And then, uh, there were different questions and you write those questions, the same ones you ask in a brainstorming session at the top of each one of the flip charts. If you have a room with 50 or hundred people, you can still do this. You might have 10 charts on the wall with the same question. So you might have 50 charts in the wall. If you had five questions total, 10 each would have the same question on it. So that would be one way to do it. You write those on the, uh, the, the papers and you put them up around the room. I did this at a uh, safety training event I did. I was teaching people how to be more creative in their safety presentations. And so the question there was, what are some ideas you could use for a safety meeting? How could you make safety fun? How could you make safety interesting? And we had different questions like that around the room. Then after I explained the exercise, as I'm telling you, at that point, you'd get, make sure every person in the room had a marker, some type of marking pen. Be careful if you're using whiteboards that you use one of the dry erase type and you have everybody go around. They have their own marker and mixed up colors. It doesn't matter. And it can be duplicate colors. In fact, you don't want only one person with a red marker and one person with a blue or whatever, because you want to have a little anonymity to hit to this. And I'll explain that in a moment. So then you tell everybody, okay, take a look at the questions. You read them out loud. And then you say, please take your marker and go write your idea on the uh, pad with that question. Make sure you get all five of the questions answered or however many there are. And once you've gone and put an answer for each of the questions or an idea, then go ahead and have a seat and uh, relax, read or whatever you'd like to while we're finishing up. And so the people get up. And by the way, this is self-regulating. If, if all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of people at one of the posters or one of the flip charts or one of the whiteboards, what happens is people then just naturally go to the one where there isn't a line. It's very simple. And so it kind of regulates itself. People move from one to the other. One of the greatest things about this concept is somebody that's really shy and nervous about putting their ideas out in front of other people, they don't have to be, they can be anonymous about it. They can write the idea down because the other thing I clarify in the instructions is I tell people, by the way, when we get all done, one of the people in the group here that volunteers is going to go around and read each of the items on each of the pages. If one of the ideas isn't clear and I need to clarify that, I might say, hey, and I might say to somebody, hey, listen, uh, do, is there, who is the person that wrote that answer? Even if I know who you are, I'm not going to say, hey, um, Bob, you, you wrote this one. Can you explain to me further what it is? And the reason why is I want Bob to feel comfortable putting the idea down and that way he won't feel like he's going to be on the spot and called on to have to speak to the whole group. 
because I know some people, over 75% of people, have a fear of speaking in public. And so I keep that anonymous. And so if we get to a question where, or an answer, or something somebody wrote down that's not clear, at that point, I will say, whoever wrote this, if you'd like to clarify it, please let me know, or talk to me during the break if you'd rather do it privately. My experience has been most people will come forward, but the ones that don't, you can talk to later. They'll come to you during one of the breaks and say, hey, that was mine and I meant this. But it's a great way to get more ideas down. Some papers are going to have, if you had two or three with the same question, you're going to get the same answer in a couple of them. That does give you an idea what maybe some of the more positive ideas are. And then once you've done this, you've got all these ideas written down. You don't have to sit there and, and have somebody writing them all down. They're already written down. You just collect them all up and you're all set. If you do it on a whiteboard, somebody's going to have to type them down, obviously. So you go ahead, you get the written ideas down, and then you can discuss them and ask people what they think about those. You can prioritize them, move them around, do whatever seems to work best for you to, uh, to get through the whole exercise. Now, some people like doing voting. They have the ideas up there and they vote on which ideas they like best and to which ones to move forward on. I'm not a big fan of that, I, I, but, but that has, does have some value if you want to get an idea of what, what people like. I would tell you that the best way to do it is by voting privately, not by, uh, and, and that's another way of doing it, is people can go around the room and put a little vote next to the ones they like. They don't have to raise their hand or anything else. You just say, okay, those are the ideas, we read them. Now go and put a, a vote next to your, your favorite one or your favorite two, write down one, two, or three, your, your best one, two, or three. And then we can get a look at see you know, what's more popular. That's an interesting distinction by writing the number one, two, or three. If you just had everybody go make a vote with a single mark next to one, and you said each person gets three votes, well, the problem with that is that you could have one idea that everybody thought it was the third best idea up there, and it could get all these votes and everybody think, oh, that's the best idea, and that's not necessarily the case. So I kind of like having that it's, you see a vote of one, a vote of two, a vote of three, you can see what the differences are. So that's another way of keeping track of that. I, uh, some people will use a thing called the parking lot if there's ideas up there that aren't useful to the group or aren't focused properly. You can say, hey, let's set those over here. My, I have a high respect for my audiences and my belief is that most people understand that when you put something in the parking lot, you're really putting it in the garbage. So don't, don't pretend something if you're not even gonna consider it later on. I don't like to lie to people. When you lie to your audience, they lose trust in you and that's gonna come across in a lot of other ways. So make sure you tell them the truth. So this is a great idea for coming up with some more ideas and ways of getting things across. My understanding is that it came from Stanford University uh, quite a few years ago, but a uh, good, good idea of getting ideas in a way that people don't feel on the spot by having to raise their hand or get there first or, or whatever. So hope you really enjoy this technique. Check out our other videos. I'm going to have all sorts of videos on YouTube here, giving you tips on presentation skills, ways you can be the master of a room that you're speaking to. Have a great day. Don't miss out. Be sure to hit the red button on the lower right and subscribe. That way, every time we release a video, you'll be aware of it.